Hey guys, welcome back to another Tech Tip Tuesday. Today we're talking about something that plagues many of us and is often considered and blamed on the wrong thing. Uh, so I wanted to shed some light on a topic that uh, I think once you find out, you'll be like, well, that really made sense and I'll buy this one part and save my charging system and keep from having to replace alternators from now on. That part is the pulley size on an alternator. You have to think when Ford, GM, Chrysler, or Toyota, whoever, designs a charging system, and it's an engine that is spinning 6,000, 6,500 RPM redline, they are designing everything they build around a certain amount of characteristics. They want it to charge in uh, at idle, mid-range, and high range. When they're given these constraints and they're trying to build within a budget, that's what they build to. So what's the first thing us hot rodders do? take the rev limiter off, spin it to 8,000, and send it. And uh, that's really what causes most of your failures in alternators. Uh, over the years, me personally, I've blamed them on being old. I've blamed them on uh, being off-brand from the parts store. I've blamed them on just anything. And uh, come to find out, it's because it's typically that we're overspinning these alternators. Yes, an alternator can go bad, but as I said, when you spin it, you're talking about a pretty big change in the RPM of this. If you look at this chart that uh, we're posting up right now, you can see the effective RPM uh, based off of the engine RPM from a stock alt pulley size on, for instance, an LS engine to um, now our aftermarket size. And uh, there's a couple different sizes of those. Most alternator manufacturers, and don't quote me on this being exact for everyone, so check for your own personal um, setup, are building their alternators to spin no more than 18,000 RPM. So it's very simple math. Take your stock one and look at this chart and uh, compare it to the engine RPM you're spinning. If it's over 18,000, it's probably about to cause you a problem. If it's really over 18,000, say 25,000, you're really gonna cause problems. When I first put my Gen 5 LT engine together, it was really the first build that I'd spun really high. We were spinning this thing to 8,500 RPMs to 8,800 RPMs. And to be honest with you, every second or third pass, it would cook an alternator. Lucky for us, uh, we struggled a lot. So we didn't make that many passes, but I'm like, man, I'm replacing a lot of alternators. And so what I ended up doing was upgrading to a Power Master, which has been great. Aftermarket manufacturers typically build them for even a higher RPM, and that's why I was able to get away with it. But the truth of the matter is, could have spent a lot less money on a pulley and uh, made the factory style alternator live. So it's just that simple, guys. Compare what you're shifting at to this chart that we share and uh, replace it with the proper size uh, pulley. Of course, you don't want to oversize it because you might cause charging problems at low RPM. Um, and you wanna consider kind of what you're doing. Like on a drag car, you're not really that worried about it charging as much as it, you do on a hot rod with vintage air, AC type of stuff, and a bag system and a CD system, or a sound system, that type of stuff. That's a lot more you know important for you to have a perfect size because when you're driving on the road at 3,000 RPMs, you want this thing to charge. There are some dynamics from, you know, idle to seven, 8,000 RPMs to consider. So don't definitely by any stretch of the imagination go right to the top size thinking, that's my ultimate safety net because it can cause you some issues in those situations. The other thing you want to consider in this situation is your harmonic balancer size. So if you have decreased that or increased it, that's going to play towards your overall RPM as well. So it cannot be forgotten. And sometimes what you think is a stock size on an aftermarket balancer is actually slightly smaller, which means that you're spinning your alternator differently. So pay attention to all those details. And I promise you that your alternators will last significantly longer. We have customers all the time. They're like, you guys cured our charging system. It's really simple math. And once you understand it, it becomes a lot clearer for everybody. So this is actually the factory si size Power Master pulley. You can see the huge difference in between that and our three inch style pulley. Um, and if you understand how pulleys work, that's significant. Again, this Power Master saved my life because it's just built to spin higher RPMs, but even on this one, it would stand to benefit from having one of our aftermarket ones. They simply take the nut off. You're gonna use a pulley puller to Remove the old one, press this one back on, and uh, you're good to go and you're back in business. 
We have these on the website. I will drop a link down in the description below so that you can grab one for your LS um, platform. These also fit LT and uh, some forward platforms. So check it out. Let us know if you have questions. If you have ideas for the next Tech Tip Tuesday, drop them in the comment section below. We'd love to hear from you guys. Or if you just have something to tell us, we also love to hear it. That's how we get our ideas and our inspiration for not only new parts, but our next Tech Tip Tuesdays. We'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for tuning in. See ya.